Hey guys, Mother D, we're back for more Super Bomberman 2, and I decided to do something interesting with this Let's Play. Instead of playing the game with fully powered Bomberman while I blow through all the stages, I might think it would be a better idea to A, show you the password to get to that stage instantaneously, and B, how would you deal with the stage if you had low power up? Or like, no power. 2-1 is definitely a good starting stage for the, somebody that has lost all their freaking pizzazz. Because it, these enemies are slow moving and you'll definitely be able to take care of them quite easily. I mean, they're so slow moving you can trap them with no problem. Not to mention the furnace can help you out as they, the furnace pretty much has the ability to set fire to anybody that happens to be on that charred line. It also includes you, so just be wary of the red flashes on the screen to warn you of ahead of time, because those can be pretty big lifesavers. Other than that, once you kill all the enemies and realize that the switch will lift up blocks that are embedded underground, you can then use that block to slide it into a hole, preferably in the direction of the hole, and pretty much do what you need to do. Keep those, keep that in mind, because you're going to be doing a lot more of that in this particular stage. Flaming Furnace definitely has these assholes, the Glore, and these guys are easily the most annoying enemies you'll meet here, one of them anyway, because they have a very fast movement speed to them, and they're a little unpredictable. However, the only predictable thing is that they take, it takes them a second or two to think of a direction to go to next, which can give you the advantage of pretty much setting a bomb right in the time that they stop, or if you're lucky, set them right in front of a bomb where they pretty much stop dead in its tracks, literally. Now if you have remote bombs, keep them as long as you can, because these are pretty much Barman's salvation, because Barman now has the power, or the control of the fuse. He can let these bombs go off instantaneously, or he can wait a really long ass time. This is easily Bomberman's best asset. The problem is, is that they're rare, and if you happen to grab armor piercing bombs, not knowing that you can revert them back to where you lose your remote bombs, that can end up really sucking ass. So if you ever get remote bombs, keep them. Don't even bother touching the armor piercing ones, because remote bomb having control of the fuse is much better than having control of soft blocks and how you pierce through them. Now we get introduced to a new enemy in 2-3, the fibers. I really don't know why they call them fibers, but since they look kind of like a heart, it starts to make sense a little bit. Fibers are reinforced with invincibility frames when they're using their little flame shooting attack, so be careful around them because that flame shooting attack has a range, of course. And, like I said, invincibility. Good news is, is that if you have remote bombs, these guys are a non-issue because you can easily just wait for the remote bomb to just sit there after they shoot their flames, and then you can kill them once they're all done with their uh, gastro acid attack. Luckily, these heart-burning bastards should not prove to be a very big threat. If you do not have remote bombs, I highly suggest setting off the furnace to clear the path ahead of you a little bit. I mean, it's not necessary, and it doesn't seem to help that much, but it wouldn't hurt honestly, because it would take care of that guy that you can't really see vertically all that well. And trust me, the, ver the fact that these guys have vertical range and the fact that Barman can't see things above him or below him too well can prove to be very dangerous, so just be careful when you're moving around this stage. 2-4. How do I hate this stage? Because you get introduced to the worst enemy in this damn stage. Zippo. Zippos are take two hits to kill. That's not the most dangerous part, though. The most dangerous part is when you hit them the first time. They become freaking mad lunatics running around left and right. And your best bet is to try to get these guys in a situation where you trap them or basically just can deal tons of damage in a short amount of time. So basically try to pin them down and keep them down. Because if they move around with their crazy insaniac mode, you're gonna have lots of trouble, and they these are probably gonna be the number one reasons 
why you die in this level. So keep that heart from 2-3 if you were paying attention. And keep it good, because you're going to definitely need it for the rest of these levels. But uh, if you have a good plan, you can get through this stage, or that particular level, without too much trouble. 2-5 is definitely a cooldown from Zippo Land, but of course you get Glorans and Ramosus it together. Ramosus are going to definitely make things a little bit easier. And then we have the Power Glove, which you need to just press A in front of a bomb instead of pressing B. You definitely do not want to press B if you have remote bombs, because you'll end up killing yourself. Definitely try to keep remote bombs and... Uh, the Power Glove together, because these can prove to be very powerful assets when combined. That's all I can, that's all I will definitely say on that. But this stage definitely shouldn't be too hard. You definitely really don't need to use the furnace here, because uh, it's just gonna, it's just gonna make getting in the back areas a little bit harder and a little bit more annoying. So just kind of just watch out from enemies coming from the right. Definitely try to Consider the option to start the furnace if you don't feel comfortable going back there. And don't forget about the switches at the beginning of the level, obviously, because otherwise that means you have to backtrack, which can eat up valuable time and also potentially kill you as you accidentally set a bomb in a worse spot, because the whole soft blocks reappearing can be one of the worst aspects of this stage. This next stage should not be too troubling, because thankfully the Furnace can prove to be a very powerful ally here. Thankfully, especially with that Zippo running around. However, you really need to be careful in these cramped spaces and the regenerating soft blocks, because they can be quite the bastards here. All I suggest you do is to try to not set one too many bombs here. Just try to take your time. Make your movements very methodical, otherwise you could be dying faster than you can say All I can say is that this level should not prove too difficult if you have a good plan around it and definitely make use of that damn furnace, but just be very careful on these damn soft blocks because these things can make or break your experience in this level. Because the fact that they regenerate can prove very nasty if you end up getting trapped by them as they regenerate because, oh, that's a cute game. You're, you're gonna throw an ice cream cone at me in a fucking hot, painful place. I think I'll take it, actually, because seriously, I need a ton of ice cream after this place. And now we meet Golem Bomber. And this guy can prove to be random. As in, he can be very easy, but he's also a little nasty with his firepower with his bombs, because they have... I believe the maximum firepower that you can have in this game. However, this proves to be very dangerous for him because he will end up killing himself sometimes because of his stupidity. And he can kill himself pretty quickly as you can see. Just try to make sure to uh, set the bombs in the right place to, so you can trap them. Because you want to move on to the next fight with a heart intact. Because this next part can prove to be a little tricky. And, of course, Golem Bomber has his own machine. It's called the Breast Fire. That's really weird. I would rather prefer you stick to Mortar Launcher. This thing can prove to be a bit of a dangerous fight, mainly because of these mortars. The closer you all to, are to the top of the, of the screen, the more dangerous they become. So try to stay low at all times. And also be careful of your own bombs if you're planning to attack him while he's attacking you. I highly would suggest waiting for the bomb, his mortars to do damage to him, because as you can see, his thing is not mortar proof. A fatal flaw with this machine, because this could be a very long ass fight if you didn't have that, if you didn't have that reinforce, but please watch out for the mortars as he's dying, because they can and will kill you. Fuck you, Golem Bomber, you're, you're just a joke, buddy. You, you didn't do anything but just flat out died on me. Thank God, because that stage can be very, very intense at times. But Pretty Bomber is up next, and her stage looks, I'm kind of, I'm kind of going to be convinced here that's just going to be crazy, wacky, what the fuck, it's like a freaking playhouse. Please don't remind me of Krusty Super Fun House. So this is the next area, guys, so I'm going to be doing the same thing I did as the last stage. 
I think this might be a little bit easier, but we'll see. So next time, Pretty Bombers Playhouse. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and adios.